morning, everybody, and a good afternoon from uh, for those of you that are connecting from uh, from the other side of the ocean. Um, we are here today to discuss a very timely and important topic: uh, materiality in times of crisis. Why you need a dynamic approach. And we are joined by Itamar Schwartz from uh, Teva Pharmaceuticals. Hello, Itamar. How are you? Hi. Hi. Great. Thank you for inviting me for this um, great discussion. Awesome. So before uh, jumping in, uh, some uh, uh, rules uh, for the discussion. We will, uh, we will have uh, uh, two main segments um, uh, today. One will be a um, conversation with Itamar on uh, uh, the challenges and, uh, and the importance of doing materiality during uh, these unprecedented times. And the second one will be a more hands-on uh, session um, showing what uh, Itamar uh, did uh, using Datamar to conduct a materiality analysis and uh, you know, providing a more tangible example of what a dynamic approach, um, what a dynamic approach is. There will be ample time for Q and A uh, at the end uh, of um, of uh, towards the end of the uh, workshop. So please use the question and answer uh, functionality um, in in Zoom uh, to submit your question, and uh, I will uh, post those to Itamar at, at, at the end um, of our presentation. And uh, uh, before uh, starting with the conversation, for those of you that don't know uh, Datamaran. Uh, in a nutshell, Datamaran is a cloud-based platform that uses natural language processing, a branch of artificial intelligence, to analyze the narrative content around ESG in a variety of publicly available sources, uh, namely corporate reports, news, social media, and, and, and regulations. We have a, a large uh, community of users uh, that you can see here, and uh, Itamar and Teva are part uh, of uh, uh, our community um, and uh, uh, they rely on us to identify and monitor uh, emerging issues and of course carry out um, a, materiality, uh, a materiality analysis. So without further ado, I think we can get uh, into our uh, conversation today. And I'd like to start uh, the conversation with asking you, uh, the audience, um, a question. So uh, I would ask to run our first poll, uh, which is, are you planning to conduct uh, a materiality assessment uh, this year? I will give you one minute uh, to answer. Uh, I can see the results coming in. Interesting. And Itamar, I, I will ask you to comment those results uh, uh, in, uh, in 20 seconds. All right, I think we can end the poll and share the results. All right, so we can see that 60% uh, of you today are planning to conduct a materiality assessment this year. 30% uh, are not, but there is a 10%, um, a, a, a around the 10% that is, uh, is not sure if mat doing materiality is useful. Uh, may maybe it could be wiser to postpone it after the crisis. So I think uh, this is a perfect kickoff for, uh, uh, for our conversation, Itamar. Uh, what do you think of, uh, of, of those results? Yeah, uh, sure. I think it, it, it really reflects um, what I also hear um, from peers and people in the industry about the confusion around uh, this crisis. Um, and and it's, it's, it makes sense. It makes sense that people are really reconsidering their plans. And it also uh, reflects what people know as what is materiality assessment and what is it and, and what it entails in terms of uh, reaching out to stakeholders and stakeholders themselves are 
in, in our uncertain situation, a lot of you know uncertainty going around, and I'm not sure about what the quality of the insights and the feedback uh, that I will get. And I have to say that it really resonates with, with our process um, at Teva. Uh, but we didn't have the privilege, uh, like you guys, uh, <laughs> like the, 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 um, that we started the process before the, the, the crisis escalated. Uh, and, and we, when, when, it, when it happened, it was a, we, we couldn't go back because we just finalized the stakeholders' uh, responses, the st stakeholder feedback, before the crisis escalated, and 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 that's why I think it's such an interesting case study uh, um, of what what you do when it ca catches you in, in kind of in the middle, <laughs> um, and and I think it it it's also um, related to why we need a dynamic approach, and and this I will I will. I will uh, relate to further on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you think that, uh, in general, more broadly, um, wh why is it important? Why you decided to conduct a materiality assessment, nonetheless, um, in, even uh, in the, in this context? Um, and uh, so, uh, give, given also the uncertainty, uh, is it wise to do it now or not? So when we started it, it you know, it, it, as I said, it really depends. We started it before we knew uh, there was a little thing in China, you know, <laughs> and and I think uh, we started and we um, we had uh, this feeling, and I think like many other ESG professional had that we need to reach out to stakeholders to get their inputs and feedback and uh, to inform our reporting practices and our ESG strategy. And uh, we knew that we would like uh, to do a very thorough materiality practice that it will inform the strategy, not only for reporting purposes. And, and I think that's why we pushed it so hard uh, to do it in a very extensive way. Um, and, and I think that's, um, that's you know, why we, feel, we felt this urge because you know, the situation of Teva and, and the, the recent uh, materiality analysis that we, we did that was more uh, uh, research-based. Uh, and and we, we felt that we need to complement it with direct stakeholders' inputs, um, but in a, in a way that is um, not taking, you know, um, six months end-to-end -end project, um, but a more, uh, in a more dynamic way. And, 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 and as much as you can, simple uh, way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's um, that's interesting. And the um, going a bit in detail in uh, you know the challenges of conducting a materiality analysis uh, during this context. What you think uh, you know the main problems are um, that you know other peers that are listening to us. Uh, today um, will be facing, um, and uh, you know I think uh, uh, probably also based on on my experience of working with you, I think there are two main aspects. One uh, is the data aspect that you uh, referred to before, meaning uh, you know there are doubts in terms of how what is the lifespan of the data you gather from stakeholders right now, given the uncertainty of the context. Meaning you know in six months it could be very well. Uh, uh, that we have a completely different uh, set of priorities to pay attention to, um, or uh, we already saw that uh, you know the S aspect or of ESG is taking a more prominent uh, role compared to compared to the past, and then I, I'd say the second challenge is probably related to governance, meaning that as you said, materiality it's 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 more. Uh, more related to strategy than than reporting, and which means that it should be brought to the attention of the C-suite, of the board, the executive team. But in this in this period, most of the, the executive team is uh, closed in the COVID the war war room, right? So how how to position the uh, the exercise so that it's actually helpful um, for them? Um, so 
Can you can you explain us a bit how you face those challenges uh, at Teva? Yeah, I think I think you know that that was the main challenge because um, the main challenge is that we got the external stakeholder feedback and then what are we doing uh, with our management when everyone in the company has, are you know really busy? You know, Teva is largest generic manufacturer in the world where um, we had to ensure supply of our meta and, and ensure employee health and safety because everything needs to function and, and we have to, um, uh, and to get the medicines to our 200 million patients around the world in this global health crisis. So unprecedented maybe 100 years ago was the last uh, similar one. So I think... Uh, um, that's why, you know, the simple answer for that is a dynamic approach because, and I'll explain for, so first is the data. When you talk about the data, it's, we knew uh, what are the emerging topics because we engage our investors and we know what they ask us about ESG. Um, and we publish our uh, COVID-19 related ESG statements around these topics. And I think uh, in addition, um, there was um, kind of the question of what, what is the quality of the data? And, and for that, I think the, 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 best, the best answer is as long as you get it as a dynamic approach, and this is uh, the way you perceive it, you understand that you will get certain topics very high, such as pandemic preparedness and higher maybe than usual times but this actually reflects what's going on now. And you can always say with a dynamic approach, okay, I'm gonna touch base again in October or November when things maybe come down. That's the thing that we don't know. You know we have known unknowns, uh, how long did this crisis go? But as long as you have you know, the results from end of March, beginning of April, and you know what is the prioritization then, and you, see, you just monitor what's going on with this crisis. And then you can say, okay, I'm gonna touch base in November and update uh, what I know. And of course, there's a thing that I will show in this later on is like the data man database that you can really refresh in one click. And then, you know, you, you know what's going on um, on the aspects that the data man database covers which are very crucial also um, for any company that want to uh, be relevant, let's say in its ESG strategy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you make a, a very interesting point, which is also, I think it's an innovative uh, point when you say with a dynamic approach, we are able to refresh the data and see, for example, in November, what the situation uh, is. And then, of course, disentangles a bit the materiality exercise from, from the reporting exercise, because it's, it's not like you're going to publish another report in, uh, in November. Still, uh, you're, you're planning to, uh, to refresh uh, the analysis, I imagine, for uh, more internal strategic um, uh, reasons. So my question uh, would, would be, the fact that instead of having a static approach to it, having a more dynamic approach, does it, does it make the materiality assessment more useful for you? Yeah, of course. And this relates to the second aspect of your previous question about the, the governance and how do you engage the management? Because we knew that we couldn't, uh, let's say, engage management with anything till things come down. Uh, on the other hand, we knew that we um, we have to we, we we plan to refresh our, our ESG strategy, so we have this materiality analysis, which is very useful for this. And then what we plan to do is to um, to to now engage the management with these results, which are uh, relatively up to date uh, from last month, and and then uh, get their input and prioritization and and also their buy-in to this process of the strategy because uh, um in 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 a in a sense you have they they need to know what are we doing and what fed you know this or informed our 
um, recommendation for what will be the strategy. Um, and I think um, this exercise is a really good example of how you can do a thorough research and, and, and reaching out and getting feedback and also engage your management and get everything to, um, to um, a one a metrics or table, wherever, however you want to put that, and, and you, you prioritize. And it's like, OK, these are the, my, my issues, my, my material, top material issues. This is what I prioritize. This is where our impacts are. And now we can you know, get, move on with our strategy and plan and set targets, set KPIs. Uh, you know, develop the programs all according to 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 what we um, have in this materiality, and of course with other research that we um, you know um, uh, we are conducting in parallel in order to get um, the, the you know the the whole set of information that you want to um, to show to to the management and and say okay this is the situation let's make decisions and, and move forward with, uh, with our strategy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you mentioned before your um, COVID-related initiatives and strategy. And am among those, you also have a, a very specific part on governance that concerns uh, board oversight um, in relation to emerging risk. Do you think that this dynamic approach, having, you know, the ability to check the pulse of what is emerging as an issue, could facilitate uh, that board oversight role. Yeah, for sure, certainly. And I think uh, um, this is something that uh, um, we are in touch uh, uh, um, with, uh, you know, our governance experts in the company, and and to know how, um, you know, to inform them of what's what's happening and, and how we monitor and what's coming up is what is emerging. And I think. Um, you know, future thinking, this emerging um, emerging issue monitoring will help us to do it more efficiently, and and I think to help uh, our colleagues um, to um, to 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 improve performance and uh, in, in a much more um, informed way and much more structured way. And I think you, you know it it also relates to the strategy, but. Um, was a more, much more, um, let's say, um, uh, on the implementation of that, of how do you do it uh, practically? Yes, and on that note, how to do it practically, I'd say it's time to move to the second segment um, of our, our conversation and gets more hands-on in terms of what, uh, you know, what we mean uh, by uh, a dynamic approach so that our audience can also have a more tangible idea what that means. What emerged really from our conversation is that, uh, you know, it may be that the traditional, more static way of conducting a materiality assessment may not be fit for purpose uh, during this context. And this is actually the question, that has, the second question that I would like to ask uh, to our audience. So if we can launch uh, our second poll, The question is, do you think that the traditional approach to materiality is too static? And I'll give, a, a, again, a, a, some seconds for, for uh, responding. Right. Results are coming in. It seems that we have a-, a Consensus, yeah. Yes, it seems that we have consensus in one direction. Uh, this, yes. So 87% of our audience uh, agrees that the traditional approach to materiality is too static. Um, there is someone that says no. I would be curious to, uh, to know more about that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, some they don't know. So for those that don't know, but also for those uh, that are convinced that the, uh, the, the approach is too static, but even for the uh, skeptic person that uh, says that uh, the traditional approach is fine, I think the second part of, uh, of the webinar would be interesting. So 
I will uh, first uh, um, give a, a quick tour of how we um, how we built a workflow using Data Moran to uh, represent a more dynamic approach to materiality. And then I let uh, Itamar share his own analysis uh, and share all the details and the thinking that went uh, behind it and, and let you ask him all the questions um, uh, around uh, the process and, uh, and the decision making. Uh, you should be able to see my screen with uh, data more now. So we are uh, in the matrix view of, uh, of a general analysis. Uh, so this is, a, this is not table analysis. This is a, a demo analysis that I built in my profile for the pharmaceuticals uh, sector. Um, and of course, you have uh, the matrix view and then the table of results by source. Uh, and uh, Itamar will explain this in more detail, uh, speaking uh, specifically to um, uh, Tevez materiality analysis. But uh, in terms of dynamic approach, so one of the limitations of this analysis is this is static. You know, this is giving us a snapshot of what is important right now based on, on the data that is available. But of course, in contexts like the current one, tell us that the expectation that the issues on the vertical axis, the, the axis representing the stakeholder priorities, stay fixed in a, in a specific point, um, is uh, that expectation is not reasonable. Uh, the reality is that the priority level changes over time reflecting uh, events like uh, the pandemic or other uh, events. So the good news is that data Moran allows uh, tracking the, the uh, in, in a quasi real time, the data changes in our data sets. So we built and launched a, a monitoring capability that will point uh, you to, towards those issues that have the largest variation um, in terms of priority over, over uh, the last six months. And the results can be illuminating in the perspective of what Itama was explaining, uh, having a system that tells you what is coming up so you are prepared. So it not, it's not necessarily related to reporting, but it's more about strategy and risk management. So looking at my Parma demo analysis, I can see that in the last six months, geopolitical events, which includes also pandemics and epidemics, uh, went up seven positions in the ranking of importance on my vertical axis. And then I can also see the relative positioning since, since the time, uh, the day I, I run the analysis to today. And I can see the, uh, the grow in, uh, um, in the data set of mandatory regulation, which means that there are new mandatory regulations uh, that address uh, the topic that are driving the importance uh, of that topic uh, up. And of course, uh, other, other issues that are gaining importance are employee rights, uh, innovation, digitalization, well-being, health and safety. So this enables a system that is way more dynamic and uh, uh, forward-looking. And on that second aspect, we also released a, a new functionality, which is called Emerging Issues Analysis. And that, uh, that functionality can be accessed in our uh, matrix view page. As you can see, once you run the analysis and you get the table of results here, you can also download the emerging issue analysis here. I won't go in detail for now in the emerging issues analysis, but essentially it, um, instead of aggregating the results from our different data sets, regulations, news, social media, corporate reports, it looks at the gaps and the differences between uh, those data sets to tell you what are the signals that a specific topic may be emerging in the future. Just to make an example, data on tracks, mandatory regulation and voluntary regulation. So if you have topics that have a very high score in voluntary regulation, like in this case, diversity and inclusion, uh, versus topics that have uh, lower scores in mandatory regulation. 
So again, diversity and inclusion as a rank of three in voluntary in the voluntary regulation database and 10 in the mandatory regulation. What this difference tells us, tells us. voluntary regulation often anticipates uh, what may become mandatory regulation. Why is that? Voluntary regulation creates best practices, non-binding standards that if adopted by enough companies may become enshrined uh, in law. So by looking at signals like this, uh, you're able to extract more value from a materiality analysis and being able, being able to uh, identify issues that may be emerging as, as important uh, in the future. So this is what we mean uh, you know, on a more practical level when we talk about uh, a dynamic approach. But I, want, I don't want to uh, you know, take more time from uh, uh, Itamar and his explanation of the work they did uh, at Teva. So I, I'll ask him to uh, share his screen. Let me try. Yes. So we let it upload. Okay, great. So here you can see um, the materiality metrics and the top right, um, you, you can see uh, the most material topics um, by this analysis. And let me um, go a little bit to, um, um, uh, to the background of this, of how we define the topics. So that was also, um, I have to say, pre-COVID-19. Uh, and and uh, to start from the very beginning, so because this is the tricky part. So how do you choose the topic that you reach out to stakeholders? So um, we started with around 77 topics and we narrowed it down through um, consultations with our uh, colleagues uh, from different business units in Teva and um, reaching out to them to topics under their responsibility and, and also other topics. And, and then we, um, we got to 25 topics. Um, and, and, and with these 25 topics, uh, we put them into, uh, and of course we got the, the list of topics from Data Maran as well. So this was like two uh, different sources. And then we, we got everything to, um, to the software. And, and then we, um, defined the subtopics under uh, this topic because the, the whole, let's say, regrouping or defi definition of what, what are the topic boundaries is very important in order to create a, a very, uh, let's say, a thorough and, 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 and a really good uh, uh, based materiality. And so, and, and then, and then we, we, we started to uh, define um, what are we gonna um, get through um, data marine database? So the first uh, uh, one was to go to our peers. And, and, and in terms of our peers, we went to two main groups. One is the more broad uh, group of, we called it a uh, healthcare sector. And it's like all of the companies in the healthcare industry. Um, and I think that uh, served us in the sense of like, get the, the, you know, the, the real big data and, 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 and an extensive amount of reports and, and to, to see what's happening out there uh, in a broader sense. And then the second group that we reached out to was the, uh, to, uh, we took uh, from the beta database we defined as the closed industry peers, which like 15 um, pharma companies, you know, industry peers. Um, and, um, and I think this also reflects more kind of uh, um, the, the, our day-to-day um, -day benchmark, let's put it that way. And, and the third one is, as Domato said, the mandatory regulation, and the fourth is the voluntary regulation, which is this dynamic, as, as, as Domato explained, is very important and, and, and very um, critical to how you um, track and monitor 
and, and emerging issues. And on the longer term, you can see that the regular is really developing and really changing uh, fast. And if we are talking about dynamic approach, this is a very important one um, because you, see, you can see lots of initiatives. And, and here you can cover them. And the next one is the, the news articles, uh, which is also very important because it gives you the, 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 the public sphere, the public sense of what's, what's happening out there in, in, in the public opinion and the social media. So all of these are from the Data Maran database. Um, and I think if you want to uh, in, uh, kind of understand how you can make it more dynamic is first is the fact that you can always um, update the data and see what's go back to um, to the database and, and pull out the data of what's happening uh, at the moment, uh, you know, on each topic, on each issue and each subtopic even, uh, and through even this feature and other features in Data Marani, if you want to check it by topic. Um, and you can always decide in terms of like, we have a global health crisis and we are not sure um, for the second part of the surveys that I will explain who we reach out to in a second, you can always say, okay, I will, uh, as I said, touch base again in November and reach out to these specific stakeholder groups uh, that are uh, important to me to validate what I have now in the database. And I think this is a very important uh, um, uh, um, point because, you know, in the traditional materiality, we had to go back and, and do the whole thing again. And, and that was really time consuming. And, and you know, and, and I think uh, one of our, you know, previous perceptions on materiality that it's an end-to-end -end project of two, three months and that's it. And then you go with it for three, four, three, four years. But no, here we can really change it and, and, and monitor it much more often. And, and so in terms of our stakeholders, you can see we reach out to employees which is a very important group, uh, I think, to every company and especially to Teva, uh, the global health leaders in, uh, um, community, uh, which is um, also very important, as, uh, you know, moreover in times of crisis, but also in, a, um, a, a, in a, you know, in, in, in normal days. Um, and our suppliers and our customers, our direct stakeholders, um, and, and and investors, of course. So uh, these five groups uh, and gives us a really um, good amount of uh, and types of stakeholders to cover um, in this practice. So this is what we have, and I think in terms of uh, the dynamic approach, we can always decide this to um, now to to to. Uh, for instance, when we're going, going to uh, engage our management and we say, okay, we want to engage our management only now uh, because we had to wait till COVID comes down and they're, they're have, we have their attention uh, to this process, now we can validate it with our management. And I think this is a, a um, you know, this sense of like, okay, we make it dynamic, we make it in a more in a process way. Um, also gives you um, the hold of like, okay, this is the process and I'm, and I'm gonna do it more often and, and, and I'm gonna be more confident in my results um, because they're up to date. Uh, and this is a very important thing. And I think it's also good for your company and the management when they um, need to be, let's say, educated or be ex get explanation of what is a materiality, what do you want? Because sometimes this word is like, a a term that you know very hard to understand so you know call it issue prioritization but when you come with the right up-to-date data and and uh, you know this extensive uh, um, amount of stakeholders and exhaustive practice I think the management can can say okay this is my uh, input and let's see what we have here and let's go back to um, to the metrics and say, okay, this is our, these are material topics, this is our materiality metrics, and now we can move on to um, reaffirm or refresh our strategy.
Excellent. So, uh, Itamar, uh, if you if you want, we can uh, open uh, the the floor uh, to more questions, and I have a um, a couple of questions myself uh, for you. Um, and those questions are, uh, what, when when you approach the materiality, you know, in this innovative and a more dynamic approach, were there any surprising results, some results that you weren't expecting, for example? And, uh, and second, uh, did you, were there some interesting uh, results coming up from the comparison of the data you got from the stakeholder surveys compared to the data that the data sets from data we're, 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 we're providing? So I think uh, one uh, very, I, I, I don't know if, if you can call it surprising, but it's very in interesting and insightful is the anti-existence uh, that we got relatively low. And I think uh, among uh, stakeholders and, 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 and you know, and, and, and we uh, in, in Teva, we, we see it as, a, as an emerging issue. And, and maybe uh, one of the, um, you know, what, what the ability that we have now is to look at this topic um, across um, stakeholders and, and really know, you know, what, what each stakeholder group, how, we, how, you, how, how, how this, the group sees this topic and, and how, um, you know, where are the blind spots? in terms of stakeholder groups and also in an aggregate uh, and stakeholders and company. Um, and I think this is, you know, right now it's on the table for the internal, let's say, validation and the internal consultation with management because uh, we know that this is an emerging and, and, and material issue. And, but stakeholders still don't see it because this is Everybody talks about COVID and there's other things and, and it's a very complicated issue um, in, our, in our perspective. So, um, so I think this was one. The second one was the uh, climate change issues that we uh, were surprised that they were relatively low to what we, um, what we expected. And I think you know, talking about COVID, I think this is also maybe um, um, related, you know, that maybe people, uh, people stakeholders that would, um, you know, if you ask them in, in October and November, they would prefer climate change resilience. And now they, they scored to pandemic preparedness, for instance. Mm -hmm. And I think this is like a, a great example to see, okay, it doesn't mean that we need to drop our climate change, uh, and, and, you know, um, climate action of the company and, and targets and our long, you know, long-term science based targets and, and, and to meet them in 2030. But pandemic preparedness is more a priority now. And we don't know what will happen in three, four months. And it doesn't say that we need to, you know, drop everything and change direction, but it's informing us in like in sense of like, okay, now this is the situation and we're gonna touch base soon in, in a few months and, and see what's going on and how can we, um, you know, address what stakeholder expects and, and also what's going on with, um, with regulation. Uh, mm -hmm. Because what interesting, uh, if I'm going back to AMR, that for regulation is a completely blind spot and you can see it's like rank 24. Uh, for voluntary and for mandatory regulations. And, and we think that as a managing issue, that's a complete blind spot for them. So, um, and, and you can see that for investors, the top priority. And this is a very interesting, you know, time, you know, that you just pull out the data and say, okay, what a huge gap. What can we learn from that? What, is, what can we expect in the near future? Uh, uh, you know, knowing what's going on in, in, with this issue uh, around the world. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's also a very little example. We have lots of <laughs> good insights from, <laughs> from this table. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So I'm, I'm going to moderate a bit the questions that we're getting. As uh, I see, there are two different levels of questions. One are more operationals uh, mm -hmm. on 
in that model. So I will uh, start with these, and then others are more general on 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 the approach. So Simona Carnevale is asking, how many stakeholders of the five categories did you uh, did you involve? In which way? Survey, one-to-one -one meetings, workshops. The stakeholders. Yes. So the stakeholders, as I said, um, we um, really wanted to make it, uh, um, you know, to go to more to the quantity side and, and a simple survey and not to go to uh, interviews this time. And I think, uh, you know, there were f um, a few considerations. One is really technical, which like this, the, the time we started, the timing of where we st when we started this uh, project and we all, through the project, we said, okay, maybe we will combine it with interviews. Uh, and, but uh, at the end, we didn't do it because, you know, also for technical reason. I think that the other reason that I, I was always in discussion that interviews are, all, you know, very much time consuming and in and, and many cases, they can be easily uh, biased or like not, you know, they're more qualitative in a way. And and it's 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 you know I think on top of on top of the materiality analysis and on top of the surveys, you know you sh you, you you it doesn't replace let's say the the engagement engagement that you have with the, with your stakeholders. I think it informs it, and I think the survey is a good way to get the data, and and to analyze the data, and then reach to the stakeholders and and to have a let's say a much deeper discussion. Uh, about the topics that are really in concerns and maybe blind spots even. I found it very uh, less useful and valuable when I discuss with our investors, for instance, about issues. Um, so I think um, that's how we approached it. And, and, and that allowed us in a very short time to get a lot of responses from, from stakeholders. Um, so, and, and another thing that you need to remember that not all stakeholders um, have strong opinions always on these topics. And, and so the survey gives you a, 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 an opportunity to engage them with this in a, in a simplified way. Um, having said that, understanding that it's a limited uh, um, input that you need to um, you know, to, to have another layer of, of engagement on top of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make, makes a lot of sense. So I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions. So what I oh, great. Now, <laughs> I'll start to cluster them uh, so that those that are more or less similar, we, we, mm -hmm. we try to answer in, a, in one go. Uh, but then, uh, uh, you know, for the audience, uh, if you feel that a question has not been uh, answered, in a, you know, as a, with the detail you would like, please, uh, uh, you know, follow up uh, with us with an uh, email. We're happy to uh, answer more completely. So there is a question from uh, Mark Prendergast that I think uh, you replied to. Mark was essentially asking if we did a materiality analysis this year, uh, is, uh, we just completed one. Is there a, an immediate need to uh, to update it? But as you said, you know, in six months uh, it could very well be that the data changes. So that's why. There is a need for for, for a dynamic uh, approach. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and even you can you can, as I said, you don't have to do such an extensive uh, um, process this time. Which you can just validate it with, uh, you know, with some of the stakeholders and 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 you know, um, in in our case, to just uh, uh, refresh the database and mm -hmm. make it more you know up to date. Um, and but yeah, I would definitely recommend it to do it around Q4 when things are at least getting a little bit more, you know, more certain. Maybe I don't want to be <laughs> to have too many expectations on the around this situation, but yeah, definitely. Then uh, there is a set of questions that concerns um, the, the issues that you selected at the beginning, so it's a, mm -hmm. about the topic mapping and those questions asks one, uh, how do you strike a balance between uh, uh, you know, having uh, those uh, dominant long-term traditional ESG issues and those that are more uh, emerging, arising in this context? 
And the second uh, set of question is more about if, if you're creating your mapping at the beginning, how do you, uh, how do you ensure that you're capturing emerging issues that weren't included in your mapping uh, uh, in, in the beginning? For example, uh, the pandemic preparedness, uh, some, uh, some, uh, um, some are asking if it was already in your mapping or you decided to add it uh, later on. For me, uh, you know, if I can uh, give my opinion, it's a, it's a sort of a chicken and egg. Uh, yeah. Here. But I guess, uh, you know, having, uh, as, as you said at the beginning, the topic mapping uh, uh, exercise is very important to define the boundaries of your exercise and having flexibility to add topics there and uh, immediately get some data on that topic makes the exercise much more dynamic. Uh, but I let you complete those answers. Yeah, so I think, I, and, I, and I have to say in this sense, uh, we knew what are our material topics, like when you see the top right, I mean, we are, you know, we knew that, you know, business ethics, quality manufacturing, access to medicine, um, pricing, sustainable such supply chain, corporate governance, those are all issues that we are, um, you know, an ongoing basis uh, working on, and we know that there are material and, and we are engaging and, and talking with our uh, stakeholders about this topic and, and reporting on them. So I think this is a, a very important um, thing to emphasize that it's not all theoretical, uh, um, and there's a must part of it that we know that it has to be included. And then I think for the, let's say, 20 other percent, I think it's, it's, it's based on, you know, how much you are um, kind of opening your radar to what's happening around you. And I think one practice that was really good was consulting with our colleagues, with our subject matter experts in the company to, to get their input of like, what do you think? Uh, and and in, in each one of the emails I sent was like, do you think that I, what do you think if I, if we missed, is there's a topic that we missed? And, 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 and I had some really good uh, insights to that. And, and I think, uh, you know, our colleagues really got, you know, you, you get the value twice. One the, that you reach out and ask, and, and the second is the input that you get. And, and I think that that's, uh, was a terrific uh, practice for us. And then I think that for the very last part was like a fine tuning of our social impact team too, because we are always, you know, engaging stakeholders, you know, you know tuning tuned to what's going out there in the health industry, um, in pharma, uh, and, and then to see, okay, these are the topics, and we had to make some tough decisions, of course. And and anyone that has a little bit of you know cl clarity about what's happening in pharma would find a topic that is missing here. Uh, but we try to regroup in a reasonable way, and I think what's most important. And now I see the value of it in the strategy process that we started, is that when I go back to my subject matter experts, they are already on board with, okay, of course, these are the topics because this is the input I gave you. Okay, let's set targets, let's set KPI, let's check, let's see how we move forward with these topics. Um, and I think uh, um, this is like the way, and, and, and of course there's always an option that we missed something. And I think the dynamic approach can also be serve this because then you can say, okay, um, let's, check this topic or let's add this topic and, 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 and refresh the materiality uh, because we miss something big. And, and I think the pandemic preparedness, of course, it's a good example because we started it and there was a little thing in China and then, okay, now we're starting to get questions about it. We're starting to, okay, we have to put it. It's, there's no, it doesn't make sense to, to exclude mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. And if I may add, uh, also from a data man perspective, of course we bring uh, our long list uh, of topics, but we recently also released a functionality that is called uh, community topics that allows users like uh, Ithamar to create uh, their own topics and also uh, gives them the option 
to share the topics with the community of, of, of data mining users. So uh, our, our users uh, are able to access this live library of topics created by other users and are free to investigate the details of these topics and add them to their analysis as well. So we also uh, try to digitalize the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, knowledge exchange that uh, Itamar was, was describing uh, before. Then uh, moving uh, to, uh, to the next set of questions, and I am afraid uh, uh, this will be uh, the, the last one as uh, uh, the, the time is uh, running out. Um, the next uh, uh, set of questions is about, uh, um, is about uh, uh, engaging with the C-suite um, and, and the board. So we have questions asking how often uh, and how you engage uh, with management to get uh, their pulse and validation on uh, material issues. And second, uh, are there some issues that are in your, in your analysis that uh, were more difficult for the board to understand and with the data that you collected uh, using this dynamic approach and using data, um, it was actually more, it was easier uh, to engage with them around uh, those emerging issues. So I think first, and, and, and this, I think I touched the topic of like, we're in the process and, and, and with the process of the engaging and maybe explaining, educating our management about what we did here, what is this practice? And, and I think first you need to have their attention, attention as I said. <laughs> and then I think second is like, I think what can be the, 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 the game changer here is like how you translate and how you frame and present this um, practice, the materiality and the, the, the insights that it brings the, and the value that it brings to the company. And, and then how you, um, you know, upgrade it to the level of, okay, this is our prioritization. This is our recommendation for, for, for strategy. And this is how it connects, it connected, because I think um, for, for, um, for um, our management, if you go with the top, the top right topic, they will say, okay, this is not new. Uh, but if you, you know, or also talking about AMR, for instance, and, you know, asking for their input and, and show the difference of what's happening and the blind spot and, okay, we have an emerging issue, let's discuss. And, and, and you know, some, you, you start to get questions about, okay, why is this there? And, and I think and this is a very important thing um, because this is a point of engagement and to start talking about how you uh, take things forward because it, it, it on the left side, I'm not sure that the management is on top of everything, and and you know, um, and 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 we really want to engage them on everything. But on the same in the same uh, uh, opportunity, we'd like to prioritize. And and there are some issues that are really you know, let's say compliance oriented, or like well managed already in the company. And this we 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 just you know. It's there, but we, we put them aside because we know that they're well managed. And this is like, you know, the, um, the analysis that we were doing in order to um, prioritize and get to the management with the specific topics that needs their attention and their input uh, on top of the, the general prioritization. Um, and, and I think this is the, the, the fascinating phase of implementing what you got in this uh, beautiful matrix or, or table. And, 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 and I think this, this will serve us really well in this process. And maybe the differentiator of like, let's say what happened in the past when you tried to manage ESG and you didn't have, you know, exactly um, based we did you didn't base your um recommendation on enough data um and and i think this is a a, a really game changer in this sense and a really transformation uh for esg professional of how they manage and how they coordinate and how they really take control of this esg which is like so wide and so you know uh, so many topics and so many issues and like touches so many aspects in the uh, in the company 
Um, yeah, so this is what I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, just uh, just to follow up um, on what you just said, uh, we just got a, another question, um, and uh, I promise you, it's it's the last one before we go. Um, so what? Uh, uh, what what um, you mentioned that it's it's not easy to get the attention of of the C, C suites. Um, do you have uh, any tips uh, that you can share on how to use, for example, the data that is coming from data Marano for from your approach in generally, and uh, and uh, how to leverage it to to get their attention more effectively. So I think, uh, um, you know, I, I, when I talked about the attention, I, I related to, to the crisis, to COVID-19. I mean, we're a pharma company, and I think, you know, in a global health crisis, it's like, okay, um, everybody's are very busy. I think in general, our management are really involved and they, they really, um, care about what's happening. And, in, and I think in the last two or three years, ESG became, uh, for them, a much more of a priority. Uh, and, and I think uh, we are in the phase that the management are really, uh, let's say, uh, inviting this engagement. And, and I think um, to leverage is, is, is I think, uh, um, exactly what I meant is like, okay, when you've been invited, you have to come and, and, and bring management as much as, as, much as um, wide and extensive information uh, about you know, what is the prioritization? Because we, we were invited by the management. Management also says, okay, I, I understand that it's a very, you know, uh, wide, uh, uh, a lot of topics there, but please prioritize. Uh, or what is our prioritization? Or what is relevant to our business? And what can we do with it in terms of, you know, um, decision making and, and, and prioritizing? So I think the data man, uh, uh, database and the uh, stakeholder engagement you know the whole materiality is is a good a starting point for this discussion and, and and then they can say okay this is not important this is important let's talk about this okay and i think for us also it's for engagement with let's say access to health which is you know a top priority for the management and okay let's start let's decide what we do with it and global health priority which is you you mentioned the the, the community topics uh, this is a community topic because this is what we think our contribution to global health reduce mortality of ncds we have the largest generic portfolio in the world and you know one of each one of nine prescriptions in the US is a Teva prescriptions, prescri prescriptions. So I think in, in this sense, it's like, okay, let's talk about that and understand how we put it in the strategy and how we prioritize this. Uh, but we are looking at the whole spectrum of ESG and not only what we you know, like to talk about, um, let's put it that way. So this is like an engagement that um, kind of don't give you a lot of uh, discounts, let's say, of what needed to be discussed uh, um, in this sense. And, and, and that's why I meant when I said prioritization of our team, that now we're discussing of, okay, these are the topics that are most material and, and we will get the attention and we will get the, the resources that need to be invested uh, and the targets and the KPIs that need to be set in order to um, to move our ESG performance and impact forward. Uh, and we have to 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 remember this. We it's very nice to make positive impact, but if you're not mitigating your ne negative impact, you're just you know staying in the same spot and you're not moving forward. So I think if you look at the topic, it's a combination. You can see lots of different kinds of topic but you have to um, to make sure that your bottom line is maximum positive impact uh, and I think that's what guides us in our journey. Excellent excellent that's great so Itamar unfortunately I see that um, I, uh, our time is up I want to thank you for your contribution today and sharing the experience and I'm, I'm sure that it, it's been a uh, 
illuminating for uh, our our audience and of course i want to thank uh, to say thank you to uh, our participants um today thank you for following us and for all your questions i'm sorry we uh, if we had to skip some questions there yeah yeah and feel free to reach out to me on uh, you know linkedin or wherever uh, if you have any follow up questions excellent of course and uh, i'm also happy uh, to uh, follow up your questions um via email so um i'd say maybe you can uh, wrap up with a one flash sentence um if you were to give a single piece of advice to those starting a materiality analysis today what what would you say just postpone it no i'm joking <laughs> but <laughs> i'm just referring to the the three guys that say said postponing so um i would recommend to change the mindset to change the mindset to shift the mindset this is a more dynamic process let's plan it as dynamic let's not just readjust uh um and it's not a two months end to end project uh we need to monitor it it's an ongoing practice and i think uh, uh, as i said to manage your esg performance and, and impact um and, and and this practice has to be um you know ongoing monitoring of material issues um that's the only way i think to do it in this you know dynamic rapidly changed reality that we live in it in 2020 and i hope you know i wish everyone uh, health safety and and that we will uh, you know overcome this crisis um as soon as we can great thank you so much itamar so let's uh, all together change mindset as you said and yeah. Thank you, Donato, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you.